Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of Qualtrics in uh, setting up a survey. So I'm not going to go through every uh, facet of setting up a survey, but I want to demonstrate a number of different options uh, available to you when you are uh, creating a survey through Qualtrics. So um, this uh, page right here, this is just uh, my um, page containing uh, various research projects. And what I want to do is um, I'm actually going to take items uh, from the International Personality Item Pool and uh, more specifically uh, items related to this scale right here so you can see there's a, a set of uh, there's a dis um, uh, instructions and then you have the individual items basically in, uh, individuals responding to the survey items would be replying um, using a scale ranging from very inaccurate to very accurate so what I'm going to do uh, is go to my uh, projects and I'm going to click on create project and it says, you'll see right here it says blank survey project. I'm going to click on this and give it a name. So I'm just going to call this example project. And uh, so I could name it anything but that's what I'm going to go, call it. And I'm going to click on create project. So now we have a blank project that's opened up and so now we can kind of pay attention to, to various um, aspects uh, of the survey. So um, so in terms of uh, you know administering surveys, one of the things that I uh, will generally do or frequently do is I'll start off with a set of instructions. So um, I'm actually just going to take the instructions from here and I'm just going to copy most of these right here. And uh, you can see it says describe yourself as generally uh, as you are generally now, not as you wish to be in the future. Describe yourself as you honestly see yourself in relation to other people you know of the same sex you are and roughly your same age. Uh, so that you can describe yourself in an honest manner, your responses will be kept absolute in absolute confidence. So I'm actually just going to copy this and uh, paste it. Uh, right here, so and you can just basically type in uh, your response, your information as well. But I'm just copying and pasting that in, um, and then I'm just going to add, um, uh, you know, as we're looking at uh, the responses, please indicate how accurate uh, a statement is in describing you, or something to that effect. So that's just um, that's kind of a, a little wording thing right there, and so you'll notice that sometimes a little default to click in. I'm actually going to get rid of this by clicking off of automatic choices and just go to zero um, for choices because it, this is just the uh, general instructions. Um, so next, we're going to click on uh, create a new question. And uh, going back to our scale right here, um, you can see the first question is, am the life of the party? So what I'll do is I'm going to type in right here, I can type in, am the life of the party, and then, uh, period, and then when we look at the uh, response options, we have very inaccurate, moderately inaccurate, neither accurate nor inaccurate, moderately accurate, and very accurate. So let's start off with very inaccurate and moderately inaccurate. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to type in uh, very inaccurate, moderately inaccurate. Uh, the next option is uh, neither accurate nor inaccurate. So I'm just going to go in here and type in neither accurate nor inaccurate. Okay, and then um, essentially moderately accurate and very accurate. So those are my response options. And uh, let me uh, click back here. You'll see over here where it says choices because I ended, hit, hit enter, I ended up in, inadvertently adding something. So I'm going to remove that just by cl clicking on five answer choices. So there you go. There's your, um, there's, uh, your, your question. So then the next one is um, feel little concern for others. So in this particular case, and instead of typing it, I can also uh, just copy and, and paste it from, from that document over here. So I'm going to click on create a new question and I'm just going to uh, paste that in. Whoops. Actually what we'll do is we'll go back here and I'm just going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it in. And there you go. And so then uh, now sometimes it doesn't work as, as cleanly as you would like, so I'm just going to, I'll just type it in, feel little concern for others, and uh, there you go. And so then you can see I can go back and do the same 
answer choices uh, below. Now you can see that if you're doing a lot of questions in your survey, that gets to be a real pain in the neck. So another option is uh, to essentially go, you know, go to the previous question right here, hit edit multiple, and you'll notice that now we get um, our response categories, uh, ordered response categories. So I'm going to actually copy this. I'm going to hit Control C, and uh, then I'm going to go down here and then go to Edit Multiple, and then I'm just going to uh, highlight all this and delete it, and then paste it in. So I'm hitting Control V and pasting that in, and so now you can see that those res response options uh, highlight. So you can see then that we could go uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I'm always prepared. So um, we can just, uh, you know, essentially create a new question, type in, am always prepared. And, uh, you know, we, like I said, we've already copied the response options before. So I'm just going to go down here to edit multiple, uh, delete this, and then uh, paste that in. And there you go. So you can go a lot faster um, if you're doing that. Another option um, is essentially to uh, you know have the, the question with the response options already noted uh, and then just copy the question and then change the stem so right up here we could say get stressed out easily so then I could just type that in and uh, right here so I can say get stressed out easily and then there you go so those are um, a couple of ways in which you can um, work a, a little bit more efficiently uh, than simply uh, typing in e every single uh, response option. Um, also note that Qualtrics does have certain uh, default uh, choices that are available. So for instance, um, let's say that uh, the next question is uh, get stressed out easily. So oh, actually we've just done that. So let's say the next question is uh, have a rich vocabulary. So I'm going to create a new question. I'll type in uh, have a rich vocabulary and um, you know there are some defaults in here so you can see up here where it says automatic choices I'm gonna press this just to show you uh, and so you can see that there are a number of different possible ones the, the first one you can see it starts with uh, disagree to agree and uh, you've got uh, dissatisfied and inappropriate to appropriate and so forth you even have uh, gender ID and, and and so forth. So there are lots of different possible um, uh, response options uh, that are available, uh, different uh, scales, if you will. So um, just so let's say, for instance, I had selected this. Let's say the the um, I had, uh, framed the uh, the questions with responses of disagree to agree. You can see right here that uh, you know clicking on this, you can see that now that just kind of fills in, and there you go. Um, also note that uh, let's say you can see like right here it starts with agree and goes to disagree and sometimes that's a little bit confusing for people like if, and uh, you can also notice too over here on position I can make this horizontal or I can make this vertical so that's another way in which we can uh, present the um, response options but in both of these cases you can see they start with strongly agree and range to strongly disagree and that may be somewhat intuit unintuitive for some folks um, where maybe you want to uh, start with strongly disagree and go to strongly agree. So to do that, we can actually go in here and after we've selected um, our uh, scale, we can actually click on reverse order and it will um, reorder uh, those response categories. Now it says strongly disagree to strongly agree. So um, at any rate, those are just a few options that are available. Like I said, we, we, we're using a different scale and so I certainly don't want to include that. So what I could do uh, in this particular case, because we had uh, the wrong scale, I can just go back to edit multiple and then copy this again and then go to edit multiple and delete what's there and then uh, paste in uh, the actual uh, response categories that should be in there. So uh, there you go. Um, the other thing to note uh, is that when you're setting up your survey, um, you know, there are different blocks. And so a lot of times people will set up their surveys and they'll have uh, one block represent uh, a, one measure, one survey measure, and another block represents another one. So this first one, you know, uh, might be, you know, I can, call, I can name it too. I might call this uh, Big Five uh, um, uh, Personality uh, Traits or, or whatever. And um, there you go. And then I can have, you know, I can um, 
I can keep adding here, or I could also set up new blocks. So I could say add block and then start a new uh, block of questions as well. So I might, I might have something like uh, need for cognition or, or something to that effect. And then I can set up um, the uh, uh, questions in the same way that I was doing before. And that's how I essentially would typically set up the um, um, my uh, instructions. So there you go uh, in that case. And then, um, you know, a lot of times people will have a block maybe containing demographics. So you can say, uh, you know, demographics and, um, you know, essentially setting up questions. So you might say, you know, what is your age? Or uh, we'll, we'll start off with gender identification. So you might have something like, uh, you know, you can see right there it, it defaulted by going to male, female. We could also add in, you know, something like, um, you know, identify, uh, do not, uh, sorry, uh, uh, identify as neither or something like that. Um, you know, something to that effect. Nevertheless, I mean, th th these are just some strategies. Another option too, you can see that these are all multiple choice options. We could also create a new question and, we, and, and uh, let's say that we want age. I could create age categories, or I could, uh, or I could have the person type in their age. So I could say, you know, what is your age, and then um, instead of sticking with multiple choice, I can click uh, on this button right here, and then go to text entry. So if I click on that, then they can enter their age, and then what will happen is, is that when you download the data, uh, it will appear as a string, and so you'll have to. Um, uh, essentially convert it like if you have SPSS it'll appear as a string variable and then you'll, you'll just have to change the variable to uh, numeric um, but uh, nevertheless you can get people to actually enter text or you might say um, you know a new one might be um, you know uh, what kind of work do you do and then you could have um, a text entry uh, there, kind of a, for a shorter answer. Or you know, if you wanted a little bit more um, uh, information, uh, then uh, you know, there's there's um, uh, you know, kind of other options as well, kind of more descriptive uh, text and and so forth. I believe I, I've never really used um, that particular thing. I usually use uh, text entry if I'm if I'm going to um, be working with that. You, uh, actually, never mind. You have down here text type, single line, and then you've got essay box uh, right here. So you can do either one. So if you want a little bit more description, you would go to text entry and go to essay box. Um, so at any rate, those are a, a few options uh, that are available to you. You'll notice over here you've got validation options. So you know one of the um, uh, issues as people are filling out surveys is um, you might have a circumstance where they might uh, skip um, questions uh, either uh, um, uh, uh, purposefully or um, or just uh, you know overlooking uh, so you could theoretically if you click over here you'll notice that there are two options there's force response or request response so the default is just not to do anything so if, as a person is filling out the survey the default uh, will just be allowing an individual to uh, fail to respond to a question and, and nothing happens. If you click on force a response, then essentially what's going to happen is it's going to force them to respond before they can move on. Um, oftentimes that's not a really a preferable choice, but you could theoretically uh, you know, request a response and um, so that uh, just to let them know that if, they, uh, if, if the person kind of uh, failed to respond, um, it's just giving them an opportunity to respond. Um, uh, again, if it was inadvertent, uh, that, that's just a little bit of a reminder. So uh, that's another option that you have available uh, when you're running, um, when you're working with uh, Qualtrics. Uh, notice too that you have options concerning moving questions around. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to uh, move this question uh, to the, uh, to the uh, top of the question list. I can actually click uh, in this case, on the question, move question, and then you end up with, uh, it looks a little funky, but you can just kind of move it to wherever you want to put it in the survey, and uh, there you go. Uh, similarly, you can move uh, blocks as well. So for instance, let's say I wanted to move demographics uh, to the top, uh, one option, or, or let's say in front of a need for cognition block, uh, then I could just click on this and I could say move block up, and so it just reorders uh, the blocks for you. So now we have the need for cognition scale that would be put in here. 
demographics right here. And so the first set of questions is going to be the big five uh, or some of the big five items that you see here. Another option too is uh, if you want to move blocks around and a little bit more efficient approach is to go under survey options, uh, not options, what am I doing? Uh, go under uh, survey flow and uh, you can actually move things around. So I could move uh, big five personality traits to the end by just clicking on move and then moving it to uh, the, the location that I wanted to move to. And so there you go. Um, so that's the survey flow. Just remember that uh, once you've reordered uh, the blocks, you'll want to click on save flow. And uh, you can't really see it uh, in the screen, but at the bottom of my screen, there's a little um, uh, green arrow, a uh, little green box with a check mark, that, and it also says save flow. And so I'm going to click on yes, and so then that just saves the, the uh, flow of the, um, the, the blocks um, in terms of what, where they're presented to individuals. Um, if you want, so uh, you know, when you want it, when you're ready to publish your survey, you can essentially click on publish, and uh, you know, this is just saying this is being published, so I'm going to click on that, and uh, so now it's been published, and it also you can see it says you can distribute it using the anon anonymous link below, and so uh, this is my uh, link. So if I was going to send this out in a um, and uh, like if I wanted to share it through social media or some other means or email it or whatever, I can copy this link and then paste it into a message and then send it out. And uh, then, you know, that becomes pretty, um, pretty efficient. Um, so at any rate, those are just a few of the um, uh, ways in which you can kind of work with uh, Qualtrics to set up uh, a survey. This is certainly not an exhaustive demonstration, but hopefully it does cover a few things that um, might be of interest to you and um, you know, maybe uh, shortens the amount of uh, learning time associated with using uh, the, um, the program. So that uh, is actually going to wrap up this particular demonstration.